In the years she has been teaching English at Madison High, our Miss Brooks has always felt she was as well qualified as any other teacher to be head of the English department. An opinion, unfortunately, not shared by her principal. Recently, however, when there's been a choice between two teachers for something, he has given Miss Brooks the nod. Not only has he given me the nod, but most of the time he's gone to sleep entirely. <laughs> But over the last month, there has been a change in Mr. Conklin's attitude toward me. And last Wednesday, he indicated that if I could keep out of trouble for the next few weeks, I might actually be the head of the department during the second semester. Since my landlady was away, her sister Angela had charge of our household for a few weeks. I told her the news at breakfast Thursday morning. It was apparent that Angela was choked with emotion because from her first words, I could see she could barely contain her enthusiasm. Uh, Connie, please pass the French toast. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, is that all you have to say? No, dear. Pass the strawberry jam, too. <laughs> Angela, I tell you something that could be of tremendous importance to me, and you react as if it was practically nothing. Oh, it, it isn't that I'm not happy for you, Connie. But I'm so worried about Minerva these days, I, I can't get enthusiastic about anything. You mean because she's been so quiet lately? Yes, dear. It's been going on for over a week now. Nothing I say or do seems to arouse her interest. Why, formerly, just the word mice used to start her mewing all over the place. Well, let me try, Angela. Minerva, listen to me, Minerva. Mice? Sweet cream? Goldfish? Canaries? <laughs> Sam? Well, who's Sam, dear? Well, you remember when Minerva had that litter of kittens a year ago, Sam was the cat passing out the cigars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you're right, Angela. She isn't responding to anything. Oh, it's got me beside myself. I was supposed to attend an emergency meeting of Margaret's ladies' aid group tonight, but... I simply can't leave Minerva alone in the state she's in. Would you mind sitting at home with Minerva tonight? Well, I'd like to help you out, Angela, but tonight Mr. Boynton and I were planning to see Sadie Thompson with Rita Hayward. Well, couldn't the three of you sit home with Minerva instead? <laughs> Having Sadie, there'll be four of us. <laughs> I suppose I could persuade him to stay here this evening. Oh, thank you, dear. You don't know how much I appreciate this. I'll give you my nervous feeding instructions at dinner tonight. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Miss Brooks. Uh, this is Mr. Boynton. Why, Mr. Boynton, I'm glad you called. We were just speaking about you. Speaking about me? Yes, about how I was going to get Rita Hayworth off your lap tonight and me on. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I'm afraid we'll have to sit home tonight. Mrs. Davis's cat hasn't been well lately, and Angela asked me if I'd sit home with Minerva while she went out. Would you mind terribly? Oh, not at all, Miss Brooks. A matter of fact, sitting home fits right in with my own plans. It does? Well, shall I go down to the cellar and blow out the light fuse, or will you? And you, uh, what are your plans, Miss Brooks? <laughs> well, when I called just now, I thought I'd have to sit home with my frog McDougal tonight, as he has a cold. But since you're going to be home with Minerva anyway, maybe you could look after them both. You want me to look after them? Yes, while I attend a lecture at my biology club. I've been dying to hear Dr. Williams' speech for months. I'd consider it one of the greatest favors you've ever done for me. Well, all right, Mr. Boynton. Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. I'll give you Max feeding instructions and the eyedropper I feed him with at noon today. And say, since you've been so nice to me, why not let me treat you for lunch? Good idea. That way you can demonstrate how the eyedropper works on me. <laughs> I'll see you later, then. All right, Miss Brooks. Bye. What did uh, Mr. Boynton want you to do, dear? Look after his frog, McDougal, while I'm sitting with Minerva tonight. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, I'm sure that McDougal and Minerva will get along just splendidly together. Well, even if they do, I doubt if anything will ever come of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course not, dear. Minerva's much too tall for him. <laughs> Oh, that's probably Walter Denton to pick me up. Come on in, Walter. The door's open. 
Well, I'm all out of eggs, so if he wants anything, Walter will have to take whatever is in here. That's an idea. Maybe it'll finally arouse Minerva when Walter battles her for her saucer of milk. <laughs> Good morning, Walter. Ah, uh, greetings to two of my favorite females. And how is the fairest flower of our fair school this morning? Just fair. <laughs> Just fair? When you're on the threshold of achieving one of your life's greatest ambitions? It's just fair when you're practically our English department's future head? It's my current head that's aching. <laughs> We're having a good deal of trouble with Minerva these days, Walter. Yes, I I'm terribly worried about her. She she's been so depressed lately. I haven't heard a meow in a week. Oh, I know what it is. It's because I haven't brought my dog around lately. Yeah, they used to play together all the time. Minerva just misses him, that's all. Oh, that's silly, Walter. Who ever heard of a cat missing a dog? Anyway, I'm sure that Minerva's forgotten all about Prince. Yeah. Oh, Connie, maybe that's it. Well, the moment you said Prince... Yeah. <laughs> sure that's it. Then my dog will bring her out of her depression in a minute. It's the only name that's aroused her in a week, Connie. Well, come to think of it, before our neighbor moved away, Minerva was also friendly with her dog, Fido. Yeah. <laughs> and that dog down the block, too. Uh, what was his name? Uh, oh, yes. Rover. <laughs> this cat is dog happy. <laughs> I think she'd even respond to a dog she'd never heard of before, like Bowser. <laughs> oh, Connie, this is wonderful. Now, all Walter has to do is to bring his dog over tonight, and Minerva will be cheerful all evening. Will you do that, Walter? No, oh, I'll be glad to, Angela. Now, wait a minute. You mean you want me to look after Walter's dog, too? Well, since you're sitting with Minerva and McDougal anyway, one more won't be much trouble, will it? Well, I'll do it on one condition, that you don't breathe this to a soul. Oh, I won't, dear. But why not? If any circus ever gets wind of this, I'm liable to be sued for unfair competition. <laughs> well, it looks like you've got us to school in plenty of time this morning, Walter. I think good we morning, should be... Good morning, Miss Brooks. Oh, good morning, Harriet. Hi, Dreamboat. Hello, sweet stuff. <laughs> Hello, glamour. <laughs> Hello, swoon girl. Hello, moon glow. Look, can I break in on the five of you for a minute? <laughs> Harriet, what kind of a mood is your father in this morning? Oh, just fine, Miss Brooks. If you're still worried about becoming head of our English department, you're practically in. Daddy said he intended stopping over to seeing you one of these nights. Yeah, well, she'll sure be in tonight. <laughs> There is an animal in town she isn't sitting with. <laughs> Her house is going to look like the Johannesburg Zoo at feeding time. <laughs> I've never seen so... Oh. <laughs> I'm one laughing hyena short. <laughs> Care to join me? As a matter of fact, I am animal sitting tonight with Mrs. Davis's cat, Walter's dog, and Mr. Boynton's frog. Well, that's a coincidence, Miss Brooks, since I'm babysitting with little Horace Anderson tonight. You're babysitting tonight? Oh, but tonight's Bull Jones's party, and you promised to go to it with me. Is that tonight, Walter? Oh, gosh, I forgot all about it. Well, I don't see how I can possibly... Say, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe I still can go with you. How, she said, with the knife already sticking three feet into her back. <laughs> Miss Brooks, since you're going to be home anyway, would you mind sitting with Horace, too? He's only eight months old, and he's absolutely no trouble. I'm sorry, Harriet. I'd like to help you out, but I have my hands full as it is. Well, just as you say, Miss Brooks. But, uh... I suppose I needn't remind you that I see Daddy day and night, and I know how important becoming head of the English department is to you, and a well-chosen word from me here and there must... Just tell me what temperature Horace likes his bottles, <laughs> Oh, then you'll do it, Miss Brooks? Oh, gosh, you're a peach. I know Mrs. Anderson will be delighted you're looking after her baby, too. 
Well, I don't know whether Mrs. Anderson will be so happy after tonight, Harriet. At eight months, the child picks up the habits of those around him very fast. But why should that bother Mrs. Anderson? After tonight, Horace might decide to jump 12 feet in the air and start <laughs> licking her face. <laughs> well, as things have worked out tonight, I'm going to babysit with Mrs. Anderson's baby, Mrs. Davis's cat, Walter's dog, Mr. Boynton's frog, and unless I run into Sabu, that's it. <laughs> but at noon, I had other things on my mind, principally how I could solidify myself with Mr. Conklin. I decided that the best way to do it was to be as cooperative as possible. So at noon, I assumed Harriet's duties and brought him his daily tray of food from the cafeteria. When Mr. Conklin saw me coming into his office with the tray, he thanked me in a rather unusual way. Miss Brooks, don't come a step closer or I'll scream for help. <laughs> but sir, this is just a tray of food for you. I know who it's intended for and I warn you, I intend to defend myself to the limit of my strength. Oh, I wouldn't spill any of it on you, Mr. Conklin. And anyway, how could I when there's a whole desk between us? With a tray of food in your hands, I wouldn't feel safe with the Mediterranean Sea between us. <laughs> now, please put down that tray. Yes, sir. Now, you put down that lamp. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, of course. Well, as long as I'm here, sir, is there anything I can do for you? Why, I've never seen your desk so cluttered before. I'd be glad to straighten it if you... Miss Brooks, I'll thank you to keep those ten crazy, mixed-up thumbs of yours off my desk. <laughs> Every time you mean to be helpful, things happen to me that are not even mentioned in wildcat accident insurance policy. <laughs> Shall I enumerate? I'd rather you didn't. September, the typewriter on the foot incident. Cost to me one fractured toe. <laughs> October, the swivel chair caper. <laughs> one sprained wrist. November, oh, November was a good number. <laughs> the surprise waxing of the office floor episode. <laughs> Cost one cracked sacroiliac. <laughs> December, uh, December. December. Nothing happened in December, sir, and I can prove it by your medical chart. That is, nothing did happen in December. Uh, no, no, you're right, and that's why I'm finally considering you for head of the English department. If one can forget your psychopathic quirks, you are capable, popular with the students. And I'm neat, clean, healthy, thrifty, thoughtful, decisive, and ambitious. I'll work as I've never worked before, do anything you want, absolutely anything. I'll be ideal in every way you'll see, just ideal. Now, do I get the job? Do I, hmm? Huh? Do I? Do I get the job? Hmm? You're down, girl. <laughs> I'll make a bargain with you, Miss Brooks. Keep out of my hair until the end of this semester. Do absolutely nothing to tease, hurt, or molest me, and the job is yours. Oh, thank you, sir, thank you. I'll be very careful, sir, very careful. Now, is there anything else I can do while I'm still here? Yes, there is one more thing you can do, Miss Brooks. And what's that, sir? Leave. <laughs> I have a great deal of work to do. Oh, yes, sir, I was just leaving this second. I was on my way out, just going, just departing, leaving at once. Goodbye, sir. I doubt if the woman will ever make it. <laughs> well, well, I've done all I possibly can. Hello, Osgood Conklin, principal speaking. Make it brief. I'm a busy man. <laughs> Hello, Osgood. Herbie. Herbie? Yeah, you remember. Your brother-in-law. Listen, Osgood, you know that house next to yours? The one that's been empty for six months? I ought to, since I emptied it. <laughs> I, I inspired the neighbors to leave. Oh, you did? Yes, they had a ridiculous five-year-old child who practiced on the piano from morning till night. Sounded like a four-year-old. Yeah, yeah, I know how much you hate noise, Osgood. Well, I have a client, a Mr. Perkins, who also hates noise, and he will buy that house next to yours, providing I can convince him that you're a quiet neighbor. You know, no babies or animals. Indeed. Well, there are certainly no babies and absolutely no animals around my place, except for my daughter's idiotic boyfriend. I know. Look, he wants to meet you and see your place tonight around nine. Tonight? Well, I was supposed to go to a lodge meeting tonight, but 
with 200 iron men, if uh, dollars at stake, I'll be available. Fine. Now, Perkins doesn't have a car, so I'll let you know where to pick him up. Then you take him to your house. But, Osgood, please, make sure everything is especially quiet tonight, huh? The house will be like a tomb. I shall send Mrs. Conklin to the movies and Harriet's going out to a party. Yeah, how about the radio and television set? There's nothing I can do about them. They're staying home. <laughs> Bye, Herbert. <laughs> All right, class, dismiss. <laughs> Miss Brooks. Oh, Miss Brooks. Yes, Harriet. You can come out from under your desk now. They've gone. Thanks, Harriet. I don't see how John Wayne does it in picture after picture. What did you want to see me about, Harriet? Well, it's about tonight. Mrs. Anderson was delighted with the idea of having you sit with Horace, but well, she doesn't want him in a strange house. She says he cries there. Well, then I guess that lets me out. So I came up with a solution for her. I'm back in. <laughs> what is it, Harriet? Well, you see, Horace has been over to my house any number of times, and he's perfectly familiar with it. So Mrs. Anderson agreed to let you sit with Horace at my house, if that's all right with you. Oh, I'm afraid not, Harriet. I'd have to bring along the cat, the dog, and the frog, and your father isn't very fond of animals. Come to think of it, he isn't very fond of humans, either. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Miss Brooks. Daddy has his lodge meeting tonight, and he won't be home until midnight. Will you do it, please? All right, Harriet. You bring the baby to your house, and I'll bring the menagerie, and let's hope the neighbors don't bring the police. <laughs> All right, attention, please, while I call the roll. Minerva? Meow. <laughs> McDougal? <laughs> Prince? Meow. <laughs> Minerva, we know how you feel about dogs, but control yourself. <laughs> Prince? <laughs> Horace, wait your turn. <laughs> Prince, stop licking Horace. You're frightening him. <laughs> Now, Horace, stop licking Prince. You're frightening him. <laughs> McDougal, get off Minerva's back at once. <laughs> Prince. Prince, you drop McDougal this instant. <laughs> but not on Horace. <laughs> not on the doorbell, either. <laughs> oh, that's someone outside. Goodness, who could that be? Hello, Connie. Why, Angela. Welcome aboard Noah's Ark. <laughs> They're all in the living room. I, I was worried about Minerva, Connie. So I thought I'd drop in and say hello to her before I went to my meeting. Yeah. Minerva, honey. Goodness, Connie. She's broken out in a green rash. <laughs> That's McDougal on her back. <laughs> Minerva looks wonderful, Connie. So relaxed. <laughs> Thanks to you, Prince. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes, and you, McDougal. Uh -oh. Connie, who's this foreigner? <laughs> Angela, meet Horace, the baby. Have you fed him yet, Connie? I was about to feed them all, but the list of feeding schedules you wrote out for me seems a bit confusing. <laughs> But you gave me the data for each one, except Minerva. I know, but something must have happened along the way. Listen to this. Feeding for Horace, 9.30 p.m. Pour three ounces of warm milk into a half cup of dog food. <coughs> oh, don't worry, Horace. We wouldn't feed you the dog food. Not with all the pablum we have around here. <coughs> oh, you don't like pablum either, hmm? How do you feel about raw liver? <coughs> Flies. <laughs> oh, I can see McDougal's been speaking to you. <laughs> Honey, I think I have an idea that will simplify things for us. Why don't I just fix up a quart of warm milk for all of them? A good idea. The drinks are on the house, boys. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> either Harriet or Clyde Beatty. <laughs> you go into the kitchen and fix up that milk, and I'll get it, Angela. All right, dear. Why, Miss Brooks? Mr. Conklin, 
I didn't expect you until midnight. What are you doing here now? I lost my glass slipper, and the prince chased me all the way home. <laughs> May I inquire what you are doing in my home, Miss Brooks? Uh, I'm sitting, Mr. Conklin. What's the matter? Park bench get too cold? Well, I can explain, sir. You Never see... mind. Now, listen, Miss Brooks. I have an opportunity to earn a $200 commission tonight. $200? Yes. yes. Mr. Perkins is coming up the walk now. He's thinking of purchasing the house next door. But first, he's visiting us to convince himself that we are quiet neighbors. You see, he hates noise. He wants to be sure there are no babies or animals around. Uh, Miss Brooks, what is it? Your, your cheeks are flushed. You're trembling. Have you caught something? No, but I'll be catching plenty soon. <laughs> I'll be all right in a moment, Miss Conklin. Well, quite a place you've got here, Conklin. I... Oh, is this your wife? Heaven for Fen. <laughs> uh, this is Miss Brooks, Mr. Perkins. Oh, She's yes. one of my English teachers, whom, by the way, I'm considering as head of her department. But not for long. <laughs> that is, what are we all standing around in the hallway for? Why don't we go out for a nice, long, brisk walk? <laughs> After all... <laughs> what was that? My throat. I have a cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange. I could have sworn it was a... Oh, that sounded like a frog. I know. With a cold, I always get a frog in my throat. What is going on around here? I'm certain that was a cat. Well, uh, once in a while, a stray dog or cat will pass by outside. Like he says, once in a while, a stray baby dog or a baby cat will pass by. Mr. Conklin, do you have a baby in this house? It sounded as if there were one in the next room. Oh, but that's preposterous. I assure you, Mr. Perkins, there are no babies or animals in this house. Follow me into the living room, please. Uh, just a moment, sir. Miss Brooks, kindly remove your body from my path, <laughs> or I shall be forced to trample it into the dust. <laughs> Follow me, Mr. Perkins. Now there, Mr. Perkins, you can see for yourself. There's nothing in this living room but a dog, a cat, a frog, and a baby. And as I've been telling you for the last hour, you'll find that your house is in the quietest neighborhood that you could possibly find. No matter where, there's nothing in this living room but a dog, a cat, a frog, and a baby! Gang, <laughs> meet Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Miss Brooks? Yes, Warden. Uh, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Please explain to Mr. Perkins what all these animals are doing in this house. I know there's a clear, logical explanation somewhere. <laughs> oh, of course there is, Mr. Perkins. I brought in the animals myself to sit with. You brought them in to sit with? Mr. Perkins, believe me, all her logical explanations sound like science fiction. <laughs> Don't you blame this poor woman, Conklin. As far as I'm concerned, you can find another neighbor. But, Mr. Perkins, please, if you'll only... No, Mr. Conklin, no. The saxophone is a difficult enough instrument to master. And I simply can't be disturbed by all these animals and this baby while I practice. Saxophone? You play the saxophone? I practice three hours a night and all day Sundays. You, uh, you play the saxophone all day Sunday, too? I do. Oh. Uh, well, I am sorry you don't like my animal collection, Mr. Perkins. And as for this infant, she's the finest baby girl I've ever had. Take it easy, Horace. He didn't know. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad I found out about all this in time. Good night, sir. Yeah. And good riddance. Now then, Miss Brooks, will you kindly give me the facts as to what you are doing in my home with this miniature zoo? But I gave you my explanation, sir. Oh, come now, Miss Brooks, the truth. Well, if I give you another explanation, will you consider me for head of the English department next term? N-O. Now, the three animals, Miss Brooks, where did they come from? Well, sir, I was babysitting for Mrs. Anderson's baby. I see. And I thought it might get a little lonely. Yes? So I insisted my three friends come along, and we've had the craziest bridge game you've ever seen. <laughs> so after persuading Mr. Conklin to at least consider me for head of the English department for next year... Angela and I brought Horace and the rest of the menagerie back to our house. Once there, Horace crawled out of his baby blanket and played with the animals until Mrs. Anderson came by to pick him up. 
Shortly after she left with him and the other animals had been called for, Angela began looking around for something. Where did uh, Minerva go? Did you notice, Connie? I believe she's in her box in the kitchen, Angela. Oh, of course. Well, let's go in and say good night to her. I'm sure she can tuck herself in, but all right. Why, she was cheerful this evening. I've never seen such a change in a cat before. No, the change was remarkable. Well, here we are, dear. I see her moving under the straw. Good night, Minerva. Good night, honey. I've heard of remarkable changes before, but this is ridiculous. <laughs>